Lesson 12, can we substitute another compound for water? What did we do in the last class? Well, we read an article about bacteria, arsenic, and phosphorus, and we looked at possible element substitutions. But why do we even care about element substitutions? How do element substitutions help us focus our search for life on other planets? Share an idea here. What do you think? So why do we care about substitutions? Well, we looked at why arsenic could substitute for phosphorus, right? Their location on the periodic table. We found out though that the study with the bacteria has not been repeatable. So in fact, it was not substituting, even though we thought it was. But maybe other elements in Chomps with an N can have substitutes. So although arsenic and phosphorus didn't work out, maybe there's another option. So we looked at the periodic table, right? And we use that to make predictions about what elements could substitute for each other based on their valence electrons. So maybe that means we can look for other substitutes when we look for life on other planets. So maybe we're not looking for chomps with an end only, maybe we can look for other things. So now it's time to look at your notes. Okay, so this first question, how does the organization of the periodic table help us to identify possible substitutions? What do you remember? Write an answer. Yeah, elements in the same group, the same vertical column, have similar chemical properties. Why? Because they have the same number of valence electrons and similar bonding patterns. So those valence electrons are the ones that are going to bond. So if they have the same number of valence electrons, their bonding is going to be similar. So what are some possible substitutes for hydrogen? So look at the periodic table. What do you think? What could be some possible substitutes for hydrogen? Well, we have these three as an example, L, I, N, A, K, or any other element located in group one, which is where we find hydrogen. What about the most likely substitute? So we just listed some substitutes, but which one is the most likely? Well, that's going to be L, I. Why? Because it's smaller. Well, only because hydrogen is really small. So Li is most similar in size. It is the one right underneath hydrogen in group one. So remember, size does play a role in how elements behave. So they need to be more similar in size. Let's try the same thing for oxygen. What are some possible substitutes for oxygen? To find oxygen on the periodic table, what's a possible substitute? So yes, we have S, E, T, E, or any other element in group 16, the same group as oxygen is in. But of those, what is the most likely substitute for oxygen? What do you think? Yeah, it's going to be S. Why? Because it is most similar in size. It is located right below oxygen in group 16. Now, there's nothing above oxygen, or we could have picked that as well, so we had to look only what is below. Okay, so before we go on, uh, we need to touch on some bonding review. Okay, so let's focus on ionic bonding first. So here are some gifts, maybe helping you remember some of the information about ionic bonding. But what kinds of elements are involved? It's a metal and a nonmetal. What happens to electrons in ionic bonding? As you can see from the GIF with the dogs, they are transferred. It goes from one to the other, one steals it. The electronegativity difference is big, so typically that's bigger than 1.7, okay? What are these types of molecules? Well, they're salts or ionic compounds. What about their intermolecular forces, the forces between the particles? Well, they're super, 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 super strong. Why? Because it's an attraction between a positive cation and a negative anion. And those are super strong, okay? And because of that, that leads us to the next answer. What state of matter do we expect it to be in, in the Goldilocks zone? Well, those intermolecular forces are so strong that we expect it to be a solid, right? And what about conductivity? 
Well, do you remember that conductivity means we have to have moving charges, right? Because electricity is moving electrons. So in order for there to be electricity, we need charges that are moving. So if something conducts electricity, it has moving charges. So a solid, no, will not conduct electricity. But if we melt it, a liquid, now we're gonna have to heat it really high to get it to melt, but if we do, it will. Also, if it's AQ, that means dissolved in water. Remember when we did that in lab? So if we dissolve it in water, now the charges can move, okay? So if we just take a quick minute and look at the GIF, you can see that Na is the metal and its electron leaves and goes right over to fluorine. Sodium forms a positive ion, a cation. Fluorine forms a negative fluoride ion and then they are attracted to each other, those strong forces. All right, now let's review covalent bonding. Okay, so here are some gifts helping you visualize covalent bonding. All right, so what kinds of elements? Well, we have two non-metals. The electrons this time are shared. So you can see in the gift with the dogs, the electrons represented by bones are being shared. They're located in between the two of them, okay? The electronegativity difference this time is less than 1.7. Closer to zero is more non-polar. Closer to 1.7 is more polar. So we have molecules, and the molecules can be either polar or non-polar. So they're polar if they have no symmetry, so the charge is not distributed equally, or they're non-polar if they do have symmetry. The intermolecular forces tend to be weak, okay? Now, they're stronger if there are partial charges, like with water, but they're still weak in comparison to ionic. Like, ionic is, like, off the chart. Covalent, yeah, not so much. But the, the, the more positive the partial charges and the more negative the partial charges, we can have some stronger forces, but, again, still relatively weak. So since those are weak, we would expect things that are covalent to be a gas in the Goldilocks zone. And what about conductivity? Yep, nope, not conductors, right? Water didn't conduct, okay? When we put sugar in, it didn't conduct, right? So not conductors. Okay, that was a lot of review, right? So uh, here, what I would just want you to draw attention to, you can see that here, when the electrons are shared, they're located between the two atoms, right? And that's really a key piece of the covalent bonding. They're shared. So now that we reviewed bonding, let's revisit our element substitutions for water, right? So sulfur was the most likely substitute for oxygen. So here's oxygen in water. And what we're gonna do is take out oxygen and put sulfur in its place. And then in another substitution, lithium was the most likely for hydrogen, right? So in that one, we're gonna take out hydrogen and put lithium in its place. So let's kind of go through that so you can see what I mean. Here's water, right? So we did this together uh, in lab. So here's hydrogen and oxygen. Water's formula is H2O. And when we draw the Lewis dot structure, it looks like this. This line right here represents two shared electrons, one from hydrogen and one from oxygen, okay? Notice all of our electrons exist in pairs when we're completed, that's important. So now let's substitute S for O. Let's see how we, how we do. All right, there's S, what do you notice? Also has six, so instead of having one oxygen and two hydrogen, we're substituting sulfur and oxygen, so we have one sulfur and two hydrogen. Just so you can see electronegativity, when we did the electronegativity here, that's 1.2, that's really uh, polar, so the partial charges are pretty strong. Here, technically that number is pretty close to zero, so it's nonpolar or weakly polar, so there's gonna be some partial positive and some partial negative, but like not that impressive, okay? So what is it gonna look like when it bonds? Well, it's gonna look like this, okay? 
which is very similar to what water looks like, right? But in place of the O, we have an S. So this is just to remind you that this line represents two electrons that are shared between. So things that we should notice, we have two electrons on each side all the way around. Electrons are always paired after bonding is complete, okay? All right, so now here's water again, but this time we're gonna substitute Li for H, okay? So there's Li. So instead of the two H's, we're gonna put two Li. Now, the electronegativity difference, woo, it's a big one, 2.4. Oh my goodness, that's ionic, it's a salt. So that means electrons aren't shared. They literally get transferred. So remember when we did this in lab, right? Um, I only put them different colors just so you could see them. So remember, we have to use the brackets and the charges. Okay, so it's going to end up looking like this, right? So what two compounds will we investigate as substitutes for water? Well, we have this one, right? What's its chemical formula? Li2O. And it's ionic, okay? And then we had this one, right? And what is the chemical formula for this one? That's H2S, and that one is covalent. So you have room in your notes. You should put both the chemical formulas, the drawings, and the words ionic and covalent, okay? Now, show me those notes so I can see that they're done. I need to enter a completion grade. If I'm not here, I will check it the next time I am, so don't forget about that. Now it's time to investigate with an escape room, okay? So in Schoology, you're gonna find this, the Lesson 12 Escape Room. The completion of the escape room is worth 42 points. Most of the questions are self-grading, but some I have to grade and award you the points, okay? You are gonna work with a partner to go through this escape room, but you both have to make sure that you're actually completing it. You don't get a grade unless you submit it. Um, <clears throat> you are gonna be able to correct your mistakes because you will have to sign in in order to complete the form. If you are absent, you are gonna have to do it on your own. So if you're here, you get to use a friend, all right? So that's your next step. Now that you completed this, you showed me the notes. Next step is to get to the escape room.